My name's Nick Ridley. I'm a professional dog photographer and gun dog editor for the Sporting Gun magazine. And this is the third video in our series of Training with Ted. As we all know, a Spaniel's main job is to hunt, but in Ted's case here, I need him to be a versatile gun dog, as well as being shot over and uh, going in the beating line, I also need him to be a good picking up dog. So right from the beginning, I concentrated quite a lot on his retrieving skills. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what steps I went through to get Ted to the point where he can be a competent and reliable retriever. Good lad. So I started Ted off right from eight, nine weeks old. I'm getting used to picking up a tennis ball or a rolled up sock. And I started that in the garden and uh, I really wanted to develop that retrieving instinct in him from a very early age. He's very well bred and I knew his hunting skills would come quite naturally, but I was very conscious not to let those hunting skills overcome his retrieving. So in the early days, it was quite simple little retrieves, just a little roll out of a tennis ball. And I always used one phrase to do his retrieves and that's get out. I used to kneel down on the floor and he would come right back into me and that was the kind of delivery I got. That was fine for me to start with. All I wanted him is to come back to me and be quite happy. Obviously in the previous video you saw how we used the place ball to develop that as well. Good lad. So those early retrieves were kept very simple on short grass so he could find them, pick them up really easy. Well the next stage is to obviously make them slightly more complicated and also the other important factor is, is to make keep the dog interested. If you keep throwing retrieves out on flat ground all the time the dogs quickly become bored and want to go off and find something else a bit more interesting. So what my next stage with Ted was to start giving him some scene retrieves, nice simple ones, but into some rough grass. I don't want it too deep because I don't want him going off hunting too far, but something like this is ideal where we've got some flat grass and then we've got an edge of slightly longer. Principle still applied. Good lad. These were still nice simple retrieves. So that ball was just landed on the edge of the grass. I'll go through the steadying process in another video. This one's just about retrieving. But I don't want to send him straight away. And when I feel he's relaxed, those two words, get out. So now he's got to start working a little bit. He's got to start using his nose. That's it, good lad. And again, I still want that coming straight back into me. I don't mind at this stage him jumping on me like this. So, We've done some very simple, straightforward retrieves. We've started on flat grass where the dog can see it, not really having to work very hard, but that's actually building up its confidence. And also starting that trust, that trust that when you say get out, that dog's gonna go and find something. We then went on to some longer grass. So they're having to work on their own. They can see the dummy go in, but they don't know where it is. So they've got to work it out themselves. And this is now the beginning. These are called memory retrieves. This is the beginning of really building up that bond between you and the dog. Quite simple. Sit the dog next to you and just put the dummy down. Again, I'll go into another video about steadiness, so we're not going to worry about that at this stage. And what we're going to do, we're going to turn around and walk away. And to start with, we're going to keep it quite a short little distance. Ted, heel. Now the idea is that the dog's now going to start to have to remember where that retrieve is. This is very simple. Sit. And the way you start to develop the memory is not to send them back straight away. In the early days you don't want to leave it too long. Get out. Start off everything nice and simple. This is all about building up dog's confidence. You're gonna come around me this time, are you? Good lad, good boy. So again, you can do this in a slightly different way. Get the dog back to heel, heel. And you can walk forward. So you're actually incorporating a bit of a heel work exercise there. Make a little noise, put the dummy down. 
heel. And again, you're going to walk away, but this time we're actually going to walk a bit further. So you're extending the time that the dog has seen that retrieve before he gets sent. Now, as this builds up, I'll actually extend this to two, three, four, five, ten minutes. If I'm with somebody, I'll have a chat with them. But the other thing I'll also do is mess around with his mind a little bit. Now he thinks now I'm going to send him for that. But actually I'm not. What I'm going to do, heal, I'm turning around and I'm going to walk away again. Never let the dogs preempt what's going to happen. Sit. And that's how you'll start to build that trust. That dog's always going to be looking at you. Dad, what am I going to do next? Tell me what I'm going to do. So once he's settled, get out. There you go, so we've got a slightly longer to retrieve now. It's still a memory. You've not thrown it out. He's had to remember where it is. Good boy. Good lad. Nice delivery. Sit. Just keep everything nice and simple. And also, when you're doing this kind of exercise, extend everything in steps. Don't go from a little short retrieve into a great big long one. Just build it up and build it up and build it up. And that way you'll gain the dog's confidence. So with Ted, I developed those straightforward memory retrieves on flat grass. And I basically extended the time in between me sending him for the retrieves so he had to remember longer and longer and longer so a bit like the simple retrieves the next thing we did we make it more difficult and we start to put memory retrieves into some longer grass but also we start to throw in a bit of an angle so what we're going to do here we're going to put this retrieve into this rough grass turn away walk back up the track let him wait and then send him back. So he's not coming back in a straight line. He now can't see the retrieve. So he's actually got to work this out for himself now. Heel. So it's gone into that rough grass. We're just going to walk back up this track. It's always handy to try and find a track if you can, because it gives the dog something to run down. It's all about confidence. You're not trying to trick them or make it more difficult. You're just trying to get their, their confidence up and they must always succeed. We, we don't want these dogs to fail. So we're going to line him up again. Just continuing that little trait of messing him around a little bit. I might just bend down and stroke him. He doesn't know when I'm going to send him. Okay, so now he's got to remember where that retrieve went in that long grass. Get out. This is all development now. Now he's got to now use his nose and his memory because he's got to find that in that long grass. You've got to let your dog work. You've got to trust it. As well as him trusting you, you've got to trust him. He'll find it. He knows where that is. There we go. Come back out, nice retrieve. Good lad, well done. Joe Irving wrote a book once called uh, Spaniels, Their Learning Chain. And it was such a good book, and it's my Bible really, and it's all about foundations. And what we've done in this whole retrieving exercise is build foundations. So we've started with simple, straightforward, easy retrieves, and then we gradually make it more and more difficult. Well. At this stage now where we've done our scenes and we've done a few memories and we're extending those times before we send the dog for the memories, now's the time we start to get to the more difficult bit. And by now the dog should really start to trust you. And I can tell you now, whatever I tell Ted to do, if I tell him to get out, he believes that there's going to be something there for him to retrieve. And it's when we get to this stage that that belief and that trust really comes into play. We're starting now to get into blind retrieves. These are retrieves where the dog doesn't know that there's anything out there. And obviously when we're out shooting, if we're out picking up, a gun could be saying to you, oh, I've dropped a bird over there. Uh, you don't know if it's there. You, the dog's certainly not seen it. 
so the dog's got to go out and work for it itself. And I start this quite simply, I use a tennis ball for this. Um, it's a baking hot day today, not the best day for doing gun dog training. But what I do do, just to add a little bit more interest, a little bit more scent for the dogs, put a little bit of spit on the tennis balls. It lays a bit more trail, it just adds a little bit more interest. And what we're gonna do with this exercise, we're gonna throw the tennis ball into the long grass. As we throw it out, Ted's nose, he'll see it go, but I'm gonna hide his eyes so he won't see where it lands. So this is a midway between a blind and a scene retrieve. So I've got me a little bit of uh, moisture on the tennis ball. So we throw it and as it goes up, we're gonna hide their eyes. So basically he's seen it go, but he hasn't seen it land. And that's the key point to this. So again, we're not gonna send him too soon. And when we're ready, get out. So now he's really got to get his nose down. I know this grass is long, but this, this is what this exercise is all about. I'm not going to interfere with him. He knows that tennis balls is out there because it's, he saw it go. This is not about handling or anything like that. This is about the dog getting out there, getting into an area and finding it all of his own accord. There we go, bang, he's on it. Lovely, lovely find. Took a little while, his head's up high because he can't quite work it out in that long grass. He's coming back onto it. There, there it is. Good lad. Good boy, yes. Good lad. Well done, mister. Good. So now we're really reaching the pinnacle of these retrieving exercises. I know I might seem very simplified and we've done it in perhaps 10, 15 minutes time, but this takes weeks and weeks and weeks of building up the dog's confidence. We're now going to move on to blind retrieves. These are retrieves that the dog has no idea where the, the dummy or the retrieve is. And of course, if you're out shooting, picking up, these are the kind of retrieves uh, in, that um, you may well come across. When a gun comes out and says to you, oh, I've got a, a bird drop down in that wood over there. Uh, you've not seen it, the dog's not seen it. And the dog's got to have the confidence to go out and find that on his own, own accord. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop a dummy up in the long grass up there to my left. Ted's back in the car, so he's got no idea where this uh, retrieve is going to be. So I shall then bring him out and send him out for it. Now, he's got to trust me that I'm telling him there's something there. He's going to have to get his nose down to find the retrieve and have the confidence to stick at it, not give up. Uh, that's a real key thing. We want these dogs just to keep going, keep going, keep going until they get success. And that is why in the early stages of retrieve training, they must always have success. They must never fail. And then they'll always believe that there's something there at the end of their hunt. So to wrap up this video, I'm gonna really try and test Ted's skills. I'll put a dummy up there quite a way up the track for a spaniel and in, in, into the wood. So again, I'm back to that trust thing. He's got to trust me when I send him out for it. He's also gonna to have to use his nose. As I've already said, it's a baking hot day, no scent. So uh, we'll just see a, what he is like as a gun dog. Um, as I've already said, he needs to be a versatile gun dog. So picking retrieves like this for me is important. I know a spaniel's main priority is for hunting, but for me, this is just as, just as important. So we'll heal him up, Ted, heal, heal. And we're gonna line him up, send him up the track. He's not a Labrador, so I don't expect him to go out in a dead straight line. I expect him to do this in a spaniel way, but that's fine. But he's still gotta get out there and uh, get into that area, heal. Heal. Get out. Get out. Okay, he just went back to that first dummy now, so I sent him up there in the area. He's working away really nicely there. He's in about where he needs to be. Bang, and I think he's found it. That was, that was just first class, excellent, nice and easy. He's just trying to work out in the long grass. Here he comes now, good lad, well done. Well done. That is months and months of hard work, practice, and that's what you get. You'll get a dog eventually that you can send out anywhere, any distance, within reason, bearing in mind he's a spaniel, and he'll pick your retrieves for you. Good boy, Ted, good lad.